Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is not Christian Klein, as those of us who know Christian can attest. Uh, but I am Pat Hanlon, and I am the acting chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, at least for the first part of this evening. And I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Um, if members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Daniel Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. Uh, and I'm here. Uh, we're expecting Van Cat Holy. Uh, in imminently, and so he will. He, I will be able to join us uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, in terms of town officials, uh, Colleen Ralston, zoning assistant, here. Uh, Colleen, do you know if Vincent Lee is here? Um, I do not think he's here, and I believe that Rick um, Bellarelli is not here either. Okay. Um, so I'd like to then go down the list of the people appearing for the applicants. Uh, Appearing for 189 Forest Street is Ilya Zvanagorodsky here. He had indicated that he may not be. I don't um, see him. Appearing for 79 Dothan Street, Adam and Jessica, Jessica Markovitz. Here. Yeah, here. It's, actually, it's actually 75 Dothan Street. What did I say? 79. Uh, so I stand corrected. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's on the we come to get our appeal, we're happy. That's wow. right. Uh, appearing for 212 Pleasant Street. Here. All right. Nelly, Nelly Aikenhead. Appearing for 20 Hobbs Court. Bob and Essie. Essie. Yes. Good to see you again. Here. Good to see you as well. All right. <clears throat> so we'll go through the usual preliminaries. This open meeting of the Arlington Zo uh, Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 um, executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website. Identifying how the public may join, this meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, uh, uh, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share any personal information. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask that you please maintain decorum during the meeting, including, including the display of an appropriate background. All all supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of uh, promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair or acting chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquian word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and to their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories uh, today. 
the um, agenda uh, has several hearings scheduled tonight. Um, we'll go through each uh, one of these. Um, the first one that is scheduled is docket number 3731, 189 Forest Street. Uh, this has already been heard. Uh, and it was continued tonight uh, to give the applicant time to provide uh, material in response to the extensive testimony that occurred at the original hearing. Uh, earlier today, the applicant who, unless he's recently arrived, is not here, um, requested a uh, continuance uh, by a letter to the board uh, asking uh, to give him the opportunity, greater opportunity to uh, respond to the various issues that both the board and the people who spoke at that hearing uh, uh, raised. Um, the next meeting that we have is March the 28th, um, and the chair will entertain a motion uh, to continue this public hearing until a date certain of March 28th at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard. So moved. Second, moved by Mr. DuPont, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. D uh, Riccadelli. Um, let's uh, take a vote. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Uh, Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Uh, I know many of you who were here, and there's a great deal of interest in this, and I look forward to seeing you, uh, uh, seeing you all, uh, uh, or at least many of you next month. Um, but we we won't proceed any further with 189 Forest Street this evening. The next item on the agenda will be uh, docket number 3733, 212 uh, Pleasant Street. Uh, and there's a substantial number of people who are, I'm sure, here to discuss this one uh, as well. Um, Ms. Aikenhead, will you, are you going to do the presentation for this? Uh, yes, I can do that. Um, we are looking, it's an 800 square foot house, three rooms total and a basement. We are looking to do an addition and put on a second floor, which would bring it up to just under 2,200 square feet. And because we're increasing the total living area by more than 50%, we need to get a special permit. I can answer any questions that the board has. If you have. Are there any questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. if I may, I, I know and, and I suspect that the applicant hasn't had the uh, benefit of seeing some comments that had been sent to the board members uh, regarding this proposal. And I guess the question is, uh, have the applicants seen this? Because I know that a couple of questions were raised by uh, planning, uh, and one of them was a question, and I'm just going to say what was in this email so that you can comment, but one of them was whether or not it would be two or two and a half stories, um, and that was asked to be clarified um, because there was a question as to whether the proposed basement would be a story. And the second issue is an observation on on the part of um, Marissa Lau saying that there is some amount of usable open space on the property. And the question then is, because she said that the application doesn't provide a calculation to show that the proposal meets the 30% open space. And so there is that question as to whether or not that 30% uh, open space requirement is met. So I guess I would just lay those out as issues that have been cited by the planning department. Ms. Aikenhead? Okay, so I did actually get that memo at uh, 545 tonight. I do have the calculations for the open space. It is, I believe, well over the required minimum. I did submit it to the town uh, on January 8th, but it, I don't think it made its way out to the board perhaps. So I could share my screen if you wanna see that. I did email it back to, uh, I think it was Colleen this evening. So she also has it in her email. So, so is it, 
Nellie, is this the, there is a calculation that that shows in the, in the staff materials that we've been given that shows that usable open space is about 175% of the gross floor area of the house that, as you're proposing it. Is the calculation that you have done different from, from that, do you know? I mean, I calculated it, let me just sit here. I have it, I have it showing as 28% unusable, 56% usable, and 15% open space landscaped for a total of 100%. Okay, well, maybe it'd be helpful if you just go through the figures for the, to, for the board. Okay, to, yeah, I'd like to share the screen if that's okay. Uh, that, that would be perfectly fine. Colleen, can you help, help her do yes. that? All set. Okay, thank you. So can you see this or should I make it bigger? If you made it a little bigger, it would help those of us over 70. <laughs> and me too, because I can hardly read it. Can you make it bigger, please? Oh, that's better. Is that okay? I can do it. Yep. Okay. So I think I they have the existing GFA. 822 and we have the proposed 2175 the footprint of the house of 822 going to 1176 the parking area is getting a little bit bigger from 480 to 638 and i there's a little bit more uh steps to the front door in terms of walkway there's a little bit more steps to the side door the sheds are going to be the same so Relative to the size of the lot, which is 6,800 square feet, this calculated out to about 29% or unusable. Okay, can we, could you go down in, in, in number 16, row 16? Yeah. Uh, I take it that the figure there for the usable open space is, th that's the 3,811.25? Correct, 56%. Okay, and is that jibe with the calculation that was that was made earlier? I think it it should. That's where that's where I think it came from. Yeah, yeah. This is all everything. This is in the application. Okay, so then if you look at the next line, the as a percentage of the GFA, which is what's relevant for usable open space for us, it indicates that that's one hundred and seventy five percent. Oh, I see. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and, and that would be considerably more than 30% that's required. Correct. Okay. There's a huge amount of open space, honestly. It's a it's a sick, pretty big lot with a pretty small house. And there's minimal hard surfaces. Right. Okay, so maybe we, the second question is, is one that that is a little harder to answer from the application materials. As I understand it, the house sort of backs into is in a, on a on a hill and the on the basement level the front part of it or a part of it on the on one is sort of almost not buried at all and and much of it and then it goes back into the hill so in the back uh or what i'm calling the back it it's quite a bit um and the question is whether or not uh that meets the zoning definition, the zoning bylaws definition of a story. And I wonder if it does, then you have a three-story building instead of a two-story building, and that will create a difficulty uh, with the half-story requirement for the, on the third story. Um, so I wondered if you can, if you're in a position to address that. Uh, Marissa basically asked the building department to do that, but this all came to us Late enough that we have not gotten a building to building department determination. Right. So I mean, you'll have to, I guess, turn to them for their expertise. I did go into the building department in September. I did talk to Rick. He did look at my the plans, which has a very steep grade. So the back of the building, which is on the spike on side, does have the exposed basement, but it goes up very quickly. And he at that time, and it was informal, so I'm not holding him to it, did say that we didn't have a story down in the basement. 
I did do some calculations, which I think are in my application. I did that calculation that you have with like the seller versus basement. I came out with seller myself, but he'd have to verify that. Okay, so so your view is basically that not only is it not a base, that it's neither a seller nor a basement. This, the definition of the seller I get is is uh, a okay. over b under a two. Yeah, the seller is less than half of the building height is above the is above the finished average yeah, grade. Exactly what you're asking. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. You go ahead. No, I missed. Well, the the question is the question there would be I gather a basement is one where the the uh, amount of the uh, above the average finished grade is more than half, and uh, and a seller would be less than half. Well, so that's something that we'll have to leave open for the time being. I think. Right. My calculations say it's a little bit under half, but. I guess Rick will have to weigh in or somebody. Mr. DuPont, do you have any more? Yeah, I'm actually uh, sort of uh, going through the definitions in the uh, bylaw. And I don't know that this actually adds anything to the conversation um, as far as what you've just read, Pat, regarding the definition of a basement. But it goes on to say in the definition of story that a basement shall be deemed a story when its ceiling is four foot six inches or more above the finished grade. And I guess the question then that is posed is what is the finished grade if you have a slope? Right. And and so I, I think that is exactly where we need the building department to chime in. So I, I guess I just I don't know the answer um, from either of those definitions in the bylaw. Right, I I agree with that analysis. I I have an average grade of fourteen point seven five. I did run it by the building department in September again, but you're right that you'll have to run it by them again. I think there was one other comment I wanted to make on the memo that came out today. Uh, which says in the first paragraph that um, we are increasing the floor area from 822 to 2175, which is approximately a 265% increase. There's a mathematical error or a typo in there. It's a 165% increase. I don't know if it matters, but I would like to make sure that that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> I, 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 you can see what she did is instead of measuring the delta over the total, she exactly. measured the whole, the whole thing. But exactly. So, Nellie, there in a lot of in the in the application, there, there's a great deal of history in this case so far. Um, you've been before various other boards, the the historic district commission. You've been before. Concom, and there are some other things that you posed in this in this property that are designed to achieve environmental benefits and so forth. And, and I wonder if, if it may be a useful thing for you to expand a little bit on those uh, beyond what's stated in the bare the bare lines of the application form. Sure. So we can keep it as low as we can. The roof line is 26 feet, where I think the, minute, the maximum is 35 feet. We are also planning to make it as e energy efficient as possible. We're going to go all electric. We're going to have triple pane windows. We're going to have a heat pump, hopefully ducted heat pump system, a, a ventilation system, ERV or HRV. And we're trying to achieve a really low HERS rating. So it will be, you know, a building that doesn't have any greenhouse gases and is kind of a modern kind of energy efficient structure. And the hope is to add solar to even uh, further increase its right. we, we are, green footprint. Yeah, we are talking, we've already talked to a solar company. We have to go back to the Historic District Commission to get the solar panels approved, but 
I think they would be approved. We're also doing some regrading of the parking. We don't have any driveway because we have no access, but we have parking. We're regrading it so that the runoff will go away from a spy pond as opposed to what it currently does, which is go towards spy pond. We have a set of steps that go down to the pond, which we are also going to similarly regrade to help with drainage and erosion. And we are going to do way down by the pond. We have about a 25 foot wide swath of native plants that will help um, reduce runoff and also provide fruit and berries for the birds. <laughs> and we're, we're getting rid of all the invasives. At present, do you have approval from those two bodies, the Conservation Commission and the HDC, uh, that you need to move forward, or is there yes. something left? No, no, we have everything except for the solar panels, which would be an add on, which we need um, historic district commission approval for. We have approvals for the house, the building, the landscape, the patios, the decks, everything from both entities. Okay. So is there any? Is there any other, are there any other questions from the board, from the applicant? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccadelli. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, for my benefit and maybe also uh, for the benefit of uh, other people who are interested um, in the hearing, uh, would it be okay to ask the applicant to just uh, give us a brief uh, walkthrough of the, the plans and, and elevations they submitted so we just make sure we understand the, the design? Can you pull up that? Yeah. Sure. Do you want me to uh, show? Ms. Ralston can do that if yeah, you sure. wish. Or, okay, we or share the screen can. again? Yes. She should, you should still have access. Oh, yeah. Okay. We do. Can you? Okay. So, do you want to like. I'll show you the outside. You probably don't care about the inside. So this is the side of the building that's facing um, Pleasant Street. You can't see it from Pleasant Street, but the neighbors will be able to see this. This is a sloped roof. So this is, isn't in the second story. This is about 26 feet high. It's flat and uh, you'll see later, the solar panels will be on the pond side. We're hoping not on this side. So as to be less obvious from the street side. This would be the right side of the building if you're going down the driveway. You see this is the slope roof, this is the 26 feet. This right here is the addition. And this is the rear of the building. So the rear is, you, it does look a lot bigger, but it's not visible unless you're on Spy Pond. So we tried really, if you see here, to tuck it down low for the neighbors and then in the back where it's less visible is where we have a little bit more height in total. And this is the other side of the building. Did you want me to go over any additional details? I'm not sure. Mr. Riccadelli? No, that, that's that's very helpful. Uh, just on the, uh, I think on the end sheet uh, with the site plan, if you could just point out um, uh, just the the area of the addition, just oh, at the beginning. context, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Let me just this in a little bit. So there, so this, so they, this is Pleasant Street way up here. We come down like this. This little L-shaped thing is, is the 822 feet that's <laughs> currently there. And if you go down, this square here is the addition. So this is the 850. And this is the L. This whole space is empty, backyard, usable, open space. Could you explain how you, what is the arrangement for getting, for getting in, right? <laughs> That's a problem we haven't totally solved. So, so we have, we have access. You can easily drive a car down there or pickup truck. I'm going to see if I, oh yeah, I can scroll it over. So here's Pleasant Street. We have a right of way down here. This this belongs to these people. We have a right of way here, and we have a right of way here, so we can get in there. Getting a concrete truck in there is going to be difficult to impossible. So we're looking at what alternatives we have. It's pretty tight. Okay. 
Yeah. There's just a construction issue. Yeah. Not a living issue. Right. Mr. Riccadelli, is there anything more? No, that's that's very clear. Thank you. I want to point out one thing that this is the parking area that's currently perme uh, impermeable. And this is what we're going to change to a permeable surface. Yeah. All right, this is a public hearing. Um, and before opening the public part of it, I wanted to give you some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. Um, after I announce the item and, and uh, the applicant in, introduces themselves and, and give the presentation they just did, um, I'll now open the meeting to public comment. Public questions and comments will only be taken as they relate to the matter at hand. They should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision and not directly to the applicant. Members of the public will be granted time to ask directions and may, excuse me, ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial nine to indicate that you would like to speak. You will be called upon by the meeting host. You will be asked to give your name and address, and you will be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair, and please remember to speak clearly. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to speak first. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed or the allocated time has ended, the public comment period will be closed. Uh, the board and staff will do our best to show documents uh, uh, that that are are uh, being discussed. Uh, there are quite a few people who are here tonight, and it could be a relatively long night. So I'd encourage people to uh, uh, be as focused as they can and uh, uh, avoid, if possible, uh, repetition of what others are saying and focus in on what you have to add that hasn't been said yet. Um, that being the case, uh, I now announce the beginning of the public hearing. Could we? All right, the first, the first person I have up is John Garber. Great, thanks. Thanks so much. <clears throat> I'm, I'll try to keep it brief uh, here, um, but just first want to thank certainly the, the Zoning Board of Appeals for, for having us at this meeting and giving us a chance to all, all comment. We really appreciate that. Um, my name is John Garber and I, I live with my wife, Sabrina, uh, at 214 Pleasant Street. Um, <clears throat> we moved into the house actually in um, June, 2017. Uh, and then uh, just a few weeks before our twins were born, this is our first home, and we plan to make this our home forever. Um, you know, moving into this house and the birth of our of our children are so uh, completely linked in our experience that we measure how long we've been here by by how how old our our, our children are. So our kids are five and a half. Um, you know, they've spent their entire lives in this. Um, you know, quiet, sort of wonderful pocket of a neighborhood uh, that that is near Spy Pond, and for them, it's been, and for us, it's been absolutely filled with light, uh, air, nature, and and I think most importantly, with with neighbors, really, that have become, you know, our our our, our best best friends. Um, so, um, <clears throat> I I do want to just um, I think the key point that I want to emphasize is that, you know, we're 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 not experts in in this process. This is our first house. This is our first process. We we just you know, are, are not at all experts. And we, we really need need a little bit more time. Um, you know, we, we received the notice uh, that there was, a, you know, uh, that, that the owner of 212 was requesting a special permit. We received that notice, I think, on, on Friday uh, afternoon. So, you know, we had, you know, in essence, about two business days, if you include include today. And, and um, you know, Dan, thanks so much for just kind of, you know, requesting kind of of a high level walkthrough of some of what's been proposed because I do I do think it's important. I mean the changes that are proposed, you know, they're really quite quite significant. Um, you know, we'll we'll more than double the gross floor area from 800 to over 2,000 square feet. Um, and and I think as Nelly of course walked walked us through this will include adding you know an additional uh, floor. Will include expanding out beyond the existing footprint by 350 square feet on both the first and second level. Um, and I think the one thing as we look at this plan that's in front of us um, is, 
it does a really good job of conveying you know the existing structure at 212 and and what what is proposed as part of this project and all in relation to the property lines but I, I think what what's missing here is how this relates to the the actual houses that are all around on all sides of this uh, of this of this house and you know we really feel that we can't really convey how close together the existing homes are and really kind of how sort of discordant the scale of this project would be with the neighboring houses and, and how much this may potentially impact our neighborhood so you know i think given the the the, the scale of the proposed changes i think we, we really do need a little bit more time to fully understand how this you know how this this the proposal will impact us and you know how it might impact our quality of life and, and the character of our neighborhood so you know, we did we do our best to put together kind of a, a a letter that would you know from from each of the neighboring properties and collectively and uh, on very short notice and we we did submit that. I don't know if it made it into the materials. I hope the board can can have a chance to review that. We would really appreciate it. I I just I don't want to take a lot of time, but I do want to just maybe highlight just a few high level points from that. You know, I I think we just now tried to understand what what. You know, are the conditions in which you know an exception to this, the the town bylaws are granted? And I think one of the key themes that kept coming up was, you know, whether those changes would be essential and 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 overall beneficial to the welfare of the, the neighborhood. And I just I'm not clear, you know, that, that 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 what's being proposed really would be beneficial to the welfare of the neighborhood. And I I, and I I wonder if it will actually be be or I'm concerned that it'll actually be be detrimental. Um, you know, both on the you know potentially the property values, but as well just more importantly the quality of the quality of our life. You know, we're we're a very um, close knit community, uh, and we grew even you know much much closer during the pandemic, where there were endless days of you know the center of gravity of all of our lives moved inward into our homes, and you know we're very you know we're constantly paying close attention to to each other, and we're conscious of how our actions impact our neighbors, and you know I think this considerateness is you know very very essential given how close our houses are together. Um, and I just wanted to put a little numbers on it because it's not apparent from any of the materials here that are that are submitted and and, and you know we can take as an example the the the, plot, the plan that we're looking at here, you know the house at 212 Pleasant Street is um, only 110 inches from the property line uh, that it shares with our house and the next nearest house at uh, 210 Pleasant Street it's 132 inches from the property line, and I think um, you know even with the flat roof um, I I think it's you know clear that the, the views, the free flow of air, uh, light, these are all going to be blocked by adding the addition of the second story. Um, certainly from the, the upstairs bedroom, but as well light, I think, into our first floor, which is our kitchen, our dining room, our, our, our family room. And I, likewise, I think the, the views from 210, 216, 218 Pleasant Street, these all have the, the potential of being partially partially blocked as well. You know, one thing I, measure, I mentioned was we had these five-year-old kids you know, one of their favorite activities is actually just digging huge holes, making tons of mud in the garden, which is currently uh, situated just in that little sliver between two, between our house and 212. And, you know, I think, you know, the proposed renovation, you know, and Mel, you mentioned it's a 26 foot, you know, I mean, that's, you know, potentially would erect essentially a 26 foot wall, you know, 100 inches away from that garden. And you know, I don't need to kind of belabor the point, but I think the mental picture here is clear that this really will obstruct, you know, sunlight, air will, will really kind of radically change their relationship to the natural environment and the beauty of Spy Pond. So I think for us, I think that's you know very stressful and um and 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 concerning. Um I think also, you know, I, I think we're concerned, you know, we we love spy pond. You know, this is our this is the only home we've known. And um I, I worry that there will be a you know sort of a precedent for um, waterfront properties to to go ahead and make large additions and to do so without really you know much concern for for how this affects the neighbors and, and their quality of life. Um, and, and then I think you know I think now you had I, I, you know touched on the driveway. It's it's a very um, unique driveway. And as you mentioned, I mean the access to your property or, or sorry, we're addressing the board. The access to two twelve is you know via an, via an easement. Um, and it's uh, and the, the the driveway is, is jointly owned by the properties at 214, 16, and 18. It's a steep driveway. It's a fragile driveway, and it's narrow at points. There are tight, there are at least two very tight turns, um, and it poses really real challenges even for sort of moderate sized cars. I, I think we're, we're really concerned that you know how we're going to navigate this with construction vehicles, equipment, building supplies. How we're going to ensure that there isn't, you know, significant damage to the driveway, to the foliage, to the to the structures, and how we ensure that this this a project at this scale gets completed safely, and 
and and that and that and that the, the pedestrians that need to use that driveway to get to and from school and work that we can do so in, in a way that 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 is safe and 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 um and reliable and then finally i just have two final um final points and and i think they're the most you know um and these are just top of mind for us i think you know i mentioned we 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 you know, deeply cherish our relationship you know with our neighbors and <clears throat> i you know i i think we have a nagging concern that um that that the owners you know would would potentially flip this house. Um, you know the resident is not a neighbor is not a resident. Uh, the owner is not a resident of the property. Um, you know according to her real estate website, she uses her depth and breadth of real estate experience to facilitate you know quote as um, high quality residential flips. And I think only um, you know only she and her husband can truly know in their hearts what you know what what their intention is in terms of living there and be, being being neighbors with us and being friends and um but i think our concern is that you know potentially not being a neighbor means that the applicant may not be as invested in the community that we've you know in maintaining good relations with the neighbors and preserving this really unique kind of pocket of arlington that we've we've worked really hard to to, to build over several years and then I, I think my final point that i that i want to make before i before i uh i guess see the floor is like probably reflects my ignorance and how little i really understand about this process but I just want to throw out there if it's you know even at all a remote possibility that that you know members of the board if you could just come down and visit <laughs> um you know i just I, I think again these plans really can't convey the the nature of how close together these homes are and how they relate to the pond and i think in order to understand that that proximity and how there's harmony between the largest house up on pleasant street and kind of working its way down to the pond front where there's a, you know, a modest cottage there and how all of that is, I think, very well harmonized. Um, I think a site visit would also make more obvious the significant challenges with the driveway in terms of you know the logistics of the proposed project of this scale, and I think also to really fully understand and appreciate the unique character of the small the small neighborhood, and I, and I think which which will be detrimentally impacted by the you know by the proposed changes here. So. Um, I, that's all we really wanted to say. I think there's more that we kind of tried to put together in, in, in our initial letter that we had just drafted late last night as a as a sort of group of neighbors here. But um, again, just really, really thank, thankful for having the chance to kind of come and, and talk here. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next person on our list is Xiu Liu. Hi, yes. Um, can I also share my screen? I sure. think that's easier for, for me. Thank you. Let me see. Okay, so um, this is the video I take today. If everyone can see, uh, this is kind of express how what what John is trying to say is we really close to each other. This is from our bedroom, master bedroom. So um, you can see the greenhouse is John's house and the white house is 2 one uh 2 12 and we are 218 um so i just take short clip clip so if they do the addition it will actually literally on our property line and uh, we we already could hear everything from my living room uh they have a, a maybe a guy or a friend visit before on the site uh about a month ago talking really loud and I, I we have a six months old baby and then my baby cannot sleep for whole afternoon so that will be one potential like we are concerning because it's really close um and uh so this is uh let me see if i can share this one so this is the survey we also have um so we are 218 the least people here um the driveway is also biggest concern that we have um so the driveway actually owned by uh by 216 matt and uh, 214 john and us the driveway as you can see it's not big enough to have uh, any concrete truck to to the side and uh, we have a right of way to share, which is okay, but the driveway is not strong enough as well. Uh, I have a video here that Nelly actually has a tree service last year. 
and uh, let me see if I can share it. It's right here. How do, how do we see? Yeah, but how do I do this? Oh. Oh. Here. Are you guys able to see the video? We're trying no, to now. No. Okay. Let me see. So, okay, this one. I think I'm sharing. So could I uh, could I interrupt you for a second, please? Yeah. And I know that this video will, after seven seconds, show somebody uh, who I can't identify myself, mm -hmm. but who I don't think is anyone here, um, coming across the screen. And I would prefer not to show a video that has somebody on it that's going to be without his consent blazoned over over uh, ACMI. So if you, much of this is consists of about a minute of loud noises. If you could either go after the period where the man comes across, or if you could go up to that first. Oh, it's seven not seconds. the man loud noises. It's I, I just share about Trevor now. Well, yeah. why don't we? If this is the one I think it is, there's yeah. at seven seconds. There's a fellow who's going to come out and deliver something in the front. And oh, that's what you mean. Okay, um, then I can show another one. Um, let me see. Okay, so so I want to show this is actually the driveway that the driveway itself cannot hold the big machinery or a truck at all. And uh, as Nelly was saying, she's trying to figure out the way, you know, how to bring those trucks in. We also concerned about how the truck will go in. Um, it might be just parking our front yard over the shared driveway. And since all three of us are using that shared driveway, uh, it's not that easy yeah, and practical for all of us for, for this to go on. Let's, let's just, just say it. And uh, as you can see, uh, the right of way here is super narrow. It's just two off from each other. Um, we are really concerned that this is not practical for the project. And uh, I think my another point, um, the noise. So the noise, yes, as I just mentioned, um, we all are old house over here and we hear each other clearly. If the addition is more close to us, we literally can hear anything. Like previous resident, we kind of like joking around, like she can hear my dog and then she will ask me, oh, how's your dog today from her? Her house, so um, we are really concerned about new addition. If we don't know what's going on, and we've been taken by surprise, to be honest, we got this notice last Friday, and uh, we don't even know the floor plan until now. Can I just have a question? Did you receive no notice of this prior to last Friday? There should have. No. I, would, I would think there ought to have been a letter to a butters that went out sometime earlier than that. Um, no, I, we actually only get this letter last Friday. And uh, that's why we kind of like all bumped. We have no idea what's going on. John and I and uh, also Jessica, Matt, we were like chatting. We were discussing like what's going on. We didn't see any floor plan. And then we also didn't know about addition as well. No one discussed with us. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Is there anything else, Ms. Hill? That's it. Uh, our next speaker is, is Ms. Rebecca Gruber. Mm -hmm. Could you, I, I have not actually, I, because I'm inexperienced in this and I forgot, but when you begin, could you state your name and your address for the record, please? I was just about to. Rebecca Gruber, 215 Pleasant Street. Um, I've lived at 215 Pleasant Street for 30 years. It's directly across the street from this little neighborhood that we're talking about. I guess my concern and pardon my ignorance about the role of the Zoning Board of Appeals, despite having lived in Arlington for 30 years. There are many things that I might like changed about my property or about my neighbor's properties. Um, but when I bought my house, I bought it under certain constraints. <laughs> And I paid a certain price based upon those constraints. One of them is that I happen to live on Pleasant Street, which has lots of traffic. And I accept that as part of the purchase of my home. I remember when 214 uh, was for sale. I remember looking at 212. 
And I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. What happens if somebody buys 212 and redevelops it? What happens to 214? And as it turns out, there are rules and regulations as to what can be done to 212. And what is being proposed is drastically different <laughs> than the circumstances under which I or anyone else would have bought 212, excuse me, 214. So I appreciate someone wanting to improve a property, wanting to uh, buy it, sell it for more by making changes that make it more desirable. But I thought the Zoning Board of Appeals is here to protect us and to operate within the constraints established when we buy our homes. And I'm concerned about the precedent this might set for other properties in town to be dramatically changed, impacting neighbors who've lived there for a long time, or maybe for a short time, having just bought a house thinking that certain rules and regulations will apply. And uh, this is a very drastic, significant change under which the conditions of the neighbors of this um, property um, bought their homes and understood the living conditions under which they expected to have when they bought those homes. Um, I will also say Pleasant Street is a very busy street. There is not a lot of parking on the opposite side of the street, a significant construction project while uh, the applicants have indicated, you know, when the construction is done, it probably won't be noticeable to people walking up and down or driving on Pleasant Street. But until the construction is done, it will affect Pleasant Street. And Pleasant Street is affected regularly by all sorts of construction that happens on it. So I don't think having more of uh, construction vehicles and other uh, types of um, activity will be helpful to the significant traffic that's happening on Pleasant Street. But that's a personal issue. I am much more concerned about the precedent that will be set if the Zoning Board of Appeals should approve this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gruber. Can I just say our job is actually to enforce the zoning ordinance? And the zoning bylaw has a specific provision in it, which is cited in the notice that you've seen um, that governs large additions and allows them under certain circumstances. And we're required to find those certain circumstances exist. Um, and we're, we're supposed to consider among the relevant facts and all the things that you've seen in, in, the, in the staff report. Um, the, uh, proposed alteration or additions, dimensions, and setbacks and relating to abutting structures and uses and conformity to the purposes of the bylaw is set forth in an earlier provision. Um, so we're forced to, to, to see, it isn't really strictly a matter of whether it's a big change or a little change, but it is a matter of whether it's a change that in some way adversely affects neighboring properties and one that meets the general requirements that we apply for all special exceptions. Um, and if it does, we, we often and sometimes we sometimes approve quite major changes and sometimes we disapprove even minor ones uh, because they they may not under certain circumstances taking into account the neighborhood in particular, uh, they may not meet the requirements of the statute. But that's where we are. It's a rule of law sort of thing. We have a bylaw that we are required to uh, uh, are required to enforce and and uh, and we will we will uphold the law one way one way or the other. Um, so the next speaker is, let's see. I'm sorry, I, I lost track of who's next. Ms. Dawson, were you next? Yes. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Jessica Sun Dawson. This is my husband Matt Dawson. And we live in uh, 216 Pleasant Street. So I just have a few points I'd like to make as well. Um, so kind of following up from our neighbor, Rebecca, um, there are a lot of constructions in our, on our street. However, like other people have mentioned before us, the driveway is a pretty unique situation. It's pretty narrow. Even regular cars will have trouble turning. 
Um, so I think this is a pretty significant um, significant impact for our lives, um, although temporarily. Um, and um, yeah, it will have a pretty significant impact during the construction. So for a project this size, we would really request that this to be considered very carefully. And another thing that Sho has mentioned, um, we live in historic homes. So um, we work really hard on maintaining the character of this neighborhood. And one of the drawbacks of living in a historic home is that the insulation is not very great. Um, we don't have central air. So in the summer, usually I open my window to and I work from home. So the, a lot of there were times where the noises were pretty loud and I um, it, it's it's going to be pretty uh, impactful for our lives during this time. And um, not to repeat the point too much, but um, this project will make the houses in our neighborhood very tight and very close to one another. And this will change the layout um, near the waterfront dramatically. And the next point I would like to say is that um, we have an easement to the pond and the easement is shared between the uh, show's property and 212. Um, and the addition of parking lot will, um, and then uh, just imagine in order to accommodate parking of a bigger house, they probably will need to park two cars instead of one car because there's no overnight street parking in Arlington that will really obstruct our access to the pond. And we love Spy Pond. Um, we go, we kayak there in the summer and uh, we skate on the pond in the winter when it's frozen. So it's, it's a really precious thing for us. And also um, when we bought the house, that was a big, uh, a big value for us. And um, one of the argument has been really hard for me to um, hear is that um, this will have environmental benefit. I, I don't quite understand why, and this is to the board, I don't understand why do we have to, why additional floor will be necessary to improve the, um, either for, for plants or, um, improvement of environmental value that that shouldn't be linked to um, the increase of floor print, either the base or the addition of floor. Um, and one point I like to make about the construction is I, I do sincerely worry about the safety of our neighborhoods. We have we have two. Well, not us. Sorry, John and Sabrina have two kids. Uh, just five years old and show has a baby. Um, the, the way the driveway is set up, um, the twins play in the yard all the time. I'm sincerely worried about doing this time, uh, their safety. Um, and also um, I, I think fine, the final point is that Matt and I have been here uh, for eight years and we are a really close knit community like John had mentioned and um, I'm really close to John and Sabrina and the kids. And um, one of the things I'm always really proud is that that like my name just is one of the first first words the kids learn to say, and I'm really proud of that. Um, and yeah, and we've always been friends with the residents in 212 as well. We had our wedding in our backyard, so it's Sho and Abraham. Uh, we had our guest live in the lake house during that time. So this process, this whole process of this project, it just feels like it's not very inclusive or completely transparent. Um, during the historic commission meeting, we raised the concern of the footprint and height, incre and height increase and our concerns were um, quickly dismissed and we were told that no special permit was required. Um, so I, I think we, we really do have a lot of concerns of how this will impact our lives and set precedent. Um, and we would like the board to consider to give us more time um, to delay this, delay this decision and give us more time. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Dawson. Uh, Tamara Joseph. 
Good evening. Hello, everyone. Thanks for allowing me to comment here. Uh, my name is Tamara Joseph, and 15 years ago in 2008, I moved into 210 Pleasant Street with my husband and then five year old son. So, same age as um, the twins next door, um, and he has grown up in this house. Uh, we are long term tenants here. Uh, the owners of the property are the Hart family, who have been here from the 1970s. Uh, Dr. and Mrs. Hart live at 208 Pleasant Street, the big house right on the street with the semicircular driveway. And their daughter, Alexis Hart, uh, manages my home. I have gotten to know all the neighbors in this area over the past 15 years and welcomed the other couples on this call when they first arrived. We have stayed at 210 Pleasant Street as tenants. Um, it was a surprise that we are still tenants, but because the hearts do not want to sell and we want to stay on State Spy Pond in this house, which is a wonderful home with much character, it is a deck house. Um, it does not have AC, central AC, like the older ones here, so I share that in common. Um, and we love the house. We love this particular community in Arlington in general. Um, and we feel that we are really blessed to be living here. I've spoken with the Hearts about this proposed bill at uh, 2 um, 12 and they share our concerns, but they were unfortunately unable to attend this hearing. The size and scope of the proposed build at 212 has come as a rather unpleasant shock, which I learned about this last Saturday night. It is not consistent with what the applicants previously shared with me and other neighbors last year. We believe that their proposed addition will have quite negative impact on all of our properties given its size. And we are also frankly troubled by how the applicants have proceeded. My home shares a property line with 212. On the, the, um, the map that's on the screen, my home is on the water right next to 212. My bedroom and my son's bedroom and our bathrooms are only 22 feet from that house. Our front door face, front doors face in the same direction. 212 is several feet closer to the pond. A thin line of trees and shrubs are between the homes. It is quite visible as you go down my driveway and stand at my, door, at my front door. In the back of the house, my screen porch, where I work in the summer, is next to the property line and will be next to their newly installed deck. The backyards are separated by a low wooden fence that you could step over, as well as shrubs. In the summer, when the windows are open, we can hear everything. Increasing the size of 212 and the number of residents who could potentially live there will exacerbate the noise issue immensely. The extension will also impede my view of Spy Pond on one side. Um, more troubling, the house will be quite visible and look disproportionate on entry to my home. Um, it will look more akin to um, neighborhoods in Cambridge, densely populated, and densely populated parts of Arlington. It is not consistent with other waterfront areas up Spy Pond. The bathrooms and bedrooms will be on the same size as mine, and it appears that one will be able to see from their windows into my bathroom window, which is the only window on that side of my home. At a minimum, their new story will block light into my home. We also share a common sewer line up the main sewer uh, up to the main sewer line on Pleasant Street. I have sadly learned way too much about that line over the past 15 years. When there are, it, there are issues, 
the results are not pretty. Adding a much larger home that accommodates many more people is really not a positive development and will put additional strain on an already aged system. For the past 15 years, only one person has lived there at a time. With this new build, more residents and guests will be using the plumbing. Because I've lived here 15 years, I know a lot about the history of this particular neighborhood and of the additions to homes. The hearts added onto my home prior to my move here, but they were unable to add the two car garage and that they wished to do so because the then owner of 212 felt that it would block his view of the lake. Paul English at 206 had to be very creative when he combined houses to build his current home because he likewise faced limitations imposed by zoning. Most recently, Amy Bernstein and Nanette Bisher limited the addition to 214 to ensure that the house didn't block the view from 216 and was to scale in the neighborhood. I do not believe that different rules should be applied in considering this proposed addition to 212, which is the smallest of these lots where such a drastic increase in scale would be most noticeable. Finally, a couple uh, points um, related to uh, what applicants mentioned, um, the point about uh, whether their ground floor should be considered a floor or a basement. They are on the same hill as mine, same slope. My ground floor is living quarters. Their ground floor, which I have seen, I would assume will also be considered living quarters, but I am obviously not the decision maker here. Finally, as to their, we have gone uh, in quite a lot of detail about the unique driveway that they would have to use for demolition and then rebuild. Um, applicants mentioned that they are, because of the challenges, looking for an alternative. The only alternative of which I'm aware is my driveway. And they have repeatedly asked the Hearts whether they could use that driveway because the Hearts share the driveway with me. So 208 and 210 share the driveway along the property line for 216, 214, and 212. And it's a straight shoot. And if they were allowed to do that and were allowed to demolish landscaping, uh, they could. Uh, bring a concrete truck in there. However, the Hearts uh, assured me that although um, they've gotten this request multiple times, they are, have zero interest in allowing this, nor do I, and my leasehold does include the driveway. Um, therefore, that would not be an alternative for this project. I'm unaware of other alternatives. Where I'm from in Florida, we bring concrete in uh, sometimes by uh, barge. I, I don't think that's possible on Spy Pond. So I think the only way that they will be able to bring concrete to this home is through this very sinuous driveway. I thank you for your time and attention and just ask that you consider all the many points that I have raised and that my neighbors have raised. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I have to start off by apologizing. I was not able to uh, join the meeting until quite a bit late. And this, my questions may have already been answered by the presentation provided by the applicant. So I apologize in advance if that's the case. Um, in looking at the uh, submissions, um, I've been trying to uh, figure out whether or not this project's gonna require the taking of uh, any of the protected trees and the setbacks. I, I couldn't really tell about trees on the property, except that I looked at uh, aerial views on Google Maps and it looks like there are trees. I don't know what property they are on since the property lines here are 
odd to say the least and close to the abutting properties. Um, so Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask for you, um, is there a tree plan? Are there trees to be taken? And if uh, also what are the plans they have for protection of trees to do this rather large uh, project? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Ms. Aikenhead, do you have an answer to that? Okay, so yes, I do. We uh, have a couple of big trees down by Spy Pond, some willows, which we are going to protect as is required by the notice of intent issued by the Conservation Commission, and we are going to retain. We did contact the tree warden, and he did say that there, we, we don't have any trees in the setback, basically. The only two big trees we have are down below. And he said, I'd have to look at the exact language, but it doesn't apply to us. We do intend to make the landscape better and to plant trees, but there's just a couple of trees down there right now to save, which we are saving. And I don't know, um, at some point, I have a couple things that I just want to mention related to previous comments, but I want to wait. I don't know how to, we can't get our raise the hand function going. So just if you could note that for later. It'll be okay. I'll, I will, I'll come back to you and give you an okay. opportunity to, you. to address, if I have not the opportunity so much as that, it will be helpful to everyone if, if you can address some of the comments that have taken place. But Mr. Moore still has the floor. So let me come back to him. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm glad you contracted the tree warden. He would have the say as to whether or not you had to do any of uh, those protections, so that that's uh, that's excellent that that, that occurred. Um, I I would uh, I have one question that the video that was being shown by one of the um, one of the folks giving um, some comments here showed a a, a a tree truck in there doing some tree work. I don't know if that was on this property or a neighboring property. Um, if it was on this property that we're looking at uh, under this application, I would inquire as to what was the nature of the tree work being done at that time, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure whether Ms. Naked Aikenhead can answer that, or I think uh... I can answer that. Okay. So after we got the okay from the Conservation Commission, we had Marquee Tree come in. The bulk of their work was pruning back. Um, branches that were overhanging the house, which we had the okay to do, and removing some of the invasives, which were down below. They pruned the bigger willows that are down by Spy Pond, but only minimally, so that they would be in keeping with the Conservation Commission permission. And there was a giant yew bush near the house that they cut down. Uh, if I can add some. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair, that, that helps. Um, what, what were the size of the invasives that were removed? I mean, I can't answer that right now. I'd have to go back and look. They were small, but I'd have to go back and look at my notes from Marquee Tree and my notes on the property. We did have an ecological plan by Parterre Ecological that called out what was invasive and what wasn't. They were relatively small, but I can't give you, I mean, I can't give you the exact figures right here, right now. I can send them in later. Okay, well, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. I, um, I I bring it up only because um, one of the issues that we've had in the past with um, additions and, and permits being required for projects like this is tree work is done in advance of the application, um, and then suddenly there's not an issue for what the application covers that could have been an issue prior to that tree work being done in advance of the application, which is an unfortunate occurrence. Protected trees on the property, I think probably at the time, were uh, eight inches and larger in diameter breast height. Uh, and uh, the law has since been changed to six inches, but in the fact that they were invasive is not really a mitigating factor. Uh, if they were large adult trees that provided shade and uh, environmental mitigation, it's something that we watch. So I wanted to make sure the applicant was aware of that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. Mr. Snake, Aikenhead, if I, if I can remember what you've said, the only thing was actually was removed was the yew tree. The others were just pruned back. That is correct. Uh, except I think you said- They weren't eight inches DBH, it was branches. One inch, two inch. Yeah. 
Okay, I, I'm sorry, Ms. Chair. I thought I heard a comment about invasives being taken. Maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, they were, they invasive were, bushes. but like bushes, little things. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank, thank you, the applicant, for the info. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this application at this time? Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm sorry. Hi, I this is Sarah oh, Radigan. I, I apologize. Yeah. I, I couldn't raise my hand in the Zoom function, so um, I'm just speaking out. But thank Could you, you thank your, you for letting me speak. Give your address as well, please. Your name and address. Sure. Yes, um, I'm I'm an attorney with Trilogy Law, and my address is 12 Marshall Street in Boston, and um, I am here. Um, assisting representing um, John Garber uh, and his wife, who are the ones who spoke um, initially and who live in the property at 214 uh, Pleasant Street, um, which is the property just uh, right behind uh, 212 Pleasant Street, where the house uh, addition is being proposed. Um, I, I wanted to comment on a couple of things, and I'll try to keep this brief because you've obviously heard a lot of testimony. Um, and I've been keeping notes furiously, trying to keep up with some really uh, strong comments from, from the neighbors. But um, the first thing I wanted to point out, um, you, had, you had asked a few of the folks about when they got notice of this hearing. Um, I suspect uh, this has happened um, to me for clients in, in Cambridge as well, but the US Post Office is not what it used to be. Um, and um, we've been hearing um, difficult stories of people getting notice, uh, you know, much too close to a hearing date in order to be able to scramble to find, um, you know, information and counsel. And so one, I have to apologize, I have just barely been getting myself up to speed in the past two hours just to be able to provide some assistance to these clients. But um, I hope that this board will take seriously the request for a continuance, at least in order to allow for a little more time to digest information. Um, but there are also some technical questions that you've raised already, um, but I, I just want to um, follow with a couple more. Um, some of these, again, may be because of my unfamiliarity, honestly, with the Arlington uh, zoning, um, but just a couple things. So um, we have on the list of questions um, whether or not the basement counts as a story and it seems like the applicant has said, you know, we should go back and speak to the building commissioner, uh, building inspector, and have them make a determination. I wasn't able to understand by looking at a cross section of the plans with the average grade. Um, I wasn't able to, you know, pick up a ruler and, and figure out how that aligned with the ordinance. But that's obviously really, really critical um, because if it is a story, then the, their request is a variance. And I think that there's there's no set of facts that would show that they're entitled to a variance. It obviously would be a different application altogether. Um, the other thing, um, we were talking about the open space, usable open space. Um, the only thing, it, it, there is a lot of um, area on the lot, but there is also a very sharp, uh, well, uh, I'm not sure I haven't been there, but from looking at the plan, it appears that there's a pretty sharp, steep drop down to the water. Um, and the I believe usable open space includes a definition that requires that at least 75% of the area has a grade of less than 8%. I'm, I'm not quite sure what 8%, I mean, 8% is relatively steep, but I think that when they're, when they're double checking those calculations, I'd ask that, that someone pay attention to that um, piece of the of the um, puzzle um, because again it, it impacts whether or not this is a variance or a special permit. Um, at a minimum, also I would hope that the applicant would be able to provide some more information to this board and to the neighbors about um, the actual impact of the changes when seen. Um, from the viewpoints of the very closest neighbors. And um, if you wouldn't mind me sharing my screen, I just wanted to show a, a couple of photos, if that's all right. That would be all right. Can okay, you... thank you very much. And I'll, I'll keep this quick. Ms. Ralston, um, have, have, have you provided her with Ms. Radigan with the permission to do that? She should be all set. Okay. Good. Yes, and let me just see if I am able to do this. Um, let's see. 
Um, I don't want to show you something I don't want to show you, right? Let's see if I can do this. Uh, nope, that's not what you want to see. I apologize, let me try again. I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, this is just a Google Earth view, um, which I thought would be helpful. I don't capture all of the neighbors who spoke today, but um, the red dot is the uh, 212 Pleasant Street lot. And you can see the modest size of the existing home. Um, this is uh, 214 Pleasant Street. Uh, the folks who I represent, you heard from people who live all around the surrounding area. Um, here is an assessor map view of the same thing, which I thought was helpful because um, what's missing from any of the plans provided is um, an indication of the distance between the buildings. I don't think, you know, these GIS maps are often not super accurate. It would be really helpful if the surveyor could run, could just shoot a line to where the nearest um, walls of the neighboring house houses are on each side that are going to be impacted by the by the development. And the last thing I wanted to do is just to show you some photos that are taken from um, from the windows of um, my client's home. Um, so this is the house that's going to be um, enlarged significantly. This is a photo from the upstairs bedroom. Again, from the upstairs. John, please correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong. Again, from the upstairs of the building. This is from their back deck. So this is the existing home. And you can imagine, I mean, just look at the, this is a, you know, small little cottage. This is what they look at from their deck. And this is, just gives you a sense of the proximity. Another view. So the addition, now if you're looking at this house, the addition is gonna extend out to the right and um, be two stories. So this entire view of the pond will be gone. Just another view of the same. Maybe. And here's another view from inside the building. Sorry, the only, the only correction, Sarah, that previous photo was not from the deck, that was from the, 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 the family room inside. inside. Mm -hmm. this, this photo right here? Correct, that's from indoors. our- Okay, yeah. great. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks for, for clarifying that. So um, just a couple of things um, in addition. So there has been a lot of talk about um, impact on the neighbors in terms of, of negative, you know, substantial impact on, um, on all of the things that you know, your zoning ordinance are meant to protect against. Um, we've talked about views, light, air, noise issues, cramped feelings of, you know, over overcrowding and density, all of these things, of course, being relative to the neighborhood that we're in. Um, we've talked about concerns about quality of life, impacts on the access to the site, um, including this uh, unique driveway easement. Um, Concerns about um, privacy, blocking light, as we mentioned before. There's also some concerns about um, impacts on shared utilities. And I think that the real hope is that, um, you know, we often hope that these conversations happen before a zoning hearing. Um, but if where there's a continuance that hopefully there's a chance to open a dialogue and um, and talk about some modifications to these plans that that uh, that might be more acceptable. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Radican. Is there anything else? Anyone else who eager is? Uh, I don't see anyone else with a hand raised. It's going once, going twice. Uh, we'll close. Well, I'm not going to close the public hearing quite. Let's let's uh, let um, Ms. Uh, Aiken have, have an opportunity to respond to or to clarify, do whatever, whatever she would, does, what she would like to do in response to the what she has just heard. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. I'm not going to comment on every single thing. There's a lot of stuff said. There's a few things that are really critical that I comment on, and they happen to do with my integrity and my communication. 
So we have sent out four separate notices to all these neighbors, one from the Conservation Commission, which I sent myself certified mail, one from the Historic District Commission, which they sent themselves certified mail. One was the good neighbors uh, notice, which is required to be sent as a part of a permit application, which I sent myself certified mail, and then the notice for this hearing. The first notice was sent out last, I think it was May or June of 2022, and all of the plans, including the addition and the second floor were the exact same outside as they are today. We have tweaked the inside somewhat, but the outside plans haven't changed since then. And I would like to note for the record that before we had any hearings or sent any notices, we emailed all three of the neighbors that are here personally, and we met on the driveway with our plans to discuss with them what we we're hoping to do. So they have known for many, 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 many months and nothing has changed and I can produce documentation if need be. That's the most important thing. The second thing that I'd like to address is this note, this notice that we're, the, this is an integrated neighborhood and we are not part of it. We are neighbors. We live about a five minute walk away, right up the hill. And our intention is to move down to that house when it's finished. We are not flippers. We are not from some other neighborhood. We're Arlington residents that live in that neighborhood. Those are, that's my, do you wanna say something? Or no? Yeah, there was never throughout all the months where these plans were made available and discussed in person with us in the driveway. Uh, there was never any kind of communication back to us about any objection of any kind none, throughout none. the like this is a shocker no observation commission review historic district so it's kind of surprising that this is now uh, suddenly uh, all these issues are suddenly coming uh, before us yeah so so the first public meeting we had was conservation commission and several neighbors were on and I, I forget the exact comments we've had two public historic district commission We can't multiple times a month. We see the neighbors zero. Have we heard zero? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. So okay. So my main point is we have talked to them, we have communicated. I'm fine that they I understand that they object. But we have, but I want to be super clear that if there's some issue with the driveway and it's damaged, we're going to fix it. Uh, that was one big objection. I think that's that, that's the main stuff for now, I guess. Thank you. So let me close the public hearing now. Um, this is the appropriate point for the board to. Uh, uh discuss this uh and but before we do that i have the sense from listening to and i'm eager to see whether my colleagues agree uh, but between getting straight with the building department on whether the basement counts as a story which is something that we really can't do tonight um and the various uh the the offer to go out and see the property more and to look at it. I will say that from my own point of view, I almost invariably go out and look, but because this doesn't have a public, isn't publicly accept, accessible in a way that's very obvious, uh, I was not able to do that uh, uh, in this one. Uh, others may have may have persevered uh, uh, beyond that, but a lot has been aired tonight. Uh, and I think that uh, the board may uh, benefit from the opportunity to uh, go out and to uh, see if all of the property owners uh, there are, are prepared to have us as intruders in, in, in their neighborhood. But I would certainly feel a great deal more comf comfortable if instead of looking at pictures, we got a greater feel for what is going on at that site. And the time between now and then may be an opportunity for uh, Ms. Radican and her clients to get together with the applicant and perhaps clear the air a little bit and see whether there are any possibilities of uh, of coming up with something that will work for both sides, for all sides, uh, 
uh, and and hopefully not require going back through the Conservation Commission and the Historic District Commission and going through the procedure all over again. But there certainly is a reason to talk, uh, and I think there's a sense of a willingness of people to talk uh, if this project goes through. You all will be neighbors and you will be living together, and you probably will hope that the memory of, of this particular night isn't going to spoil your relations going forward. So with that said, I open up to the board. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on this application? Well, seeing none. Um, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I had my microphone turned off. If I could, I just had a couple of comments. One is I'm in complete agreement with you. I think it would be wonderful to have the opportunity. I, like you, drove by and couldn't figure out where the property was. And if you stop uh, too long on Pleasant Street, you're liable <laughs> to be rear-ended. So I was pretty careful about that. I, I would, I have a couple of questions, if I may, because I think that there are a lot of issues that have been raised. And I just had two very quick questions for um, the applicant. Um, and I think I know the answers, but it, could I just ask, um, it, will the setbacks change between the property where you're going to be building? I think it's uh, as it relates to 214 and um, two, is it 216? Because I know that there was a comment made by Mr. Garber in the very beginning about how close the property is your structure is to his structure. And it wasn't really with reference to the setback. It was really, I think, the distance between the structures. So is your building going to cause the building that you propose to be any closer to the Garber property? No, it is not. And similarly on the side where you're gonna be putting that addition, um, if it's if it's going to be closer to that abutting property, is it still going to be within the setback requirements? Yes, we meet all the setbacks. It'll be about five feet closer to the property on the side, which is 218, but well within the required setback. Okay. And then I would just note that I know that there are a number of things that have been uh, raised as concerns by the neighbors. And if we're going to have this hiatus between now and another meeting, I do think obviously the issue with regard to the construction and the driveway is something that I'd like to hear some more about with regard to damage, but also with regard to pedestrian safety. Because I do think that that's an issue, especially if it's narrow and it's not a great sight lines. Um, the other thing is, I'm assuming that even if you do increase the amount of parking, you're not going to interfere with that easement down to Spy Pond that was cited earlier, because you can't legally, but I assume you're not going to. We are not going to. We could, but there's very little, the, the whole, it's basically all paid parking anyway. We're just going to square it off a little bit. There's going to be essentially no change and we're not going to interfere with that easement. And if I may, one more thing that was raised and, and I think it's something that I'm not sure it's addressed as part of the process, but obviously that sewer line strain is an issue. I don't know if that's part of what you've been talking to the building department about. So I'm not asking you to give us any sort of information about that but when we come back the next time, that may be something that we want to talk about. Okay. Okay, that's yep. all I have. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Is there any, Mr. Riccadelli, Ms. Hoffman? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccadelli. I'm in agreement with, um, I just kind of wanted to echo what you said um, about the um, confirmation of the, the, the basement story uh, and uh, as well as the slope of the grade and the usable open space, I think that you know those are sort of the two critical things that we need to um, just understand uh, before we we vote on this on this project. And um, I do um, I do agree with uh, Ms. Radigan's um, comments about you know it would be helpful um, if we just knew um, from the survey you know where the 
adjacent properties are. So if, if that's something that would be possible uh, while you have someone confirming the grade, I, I think that you know it would go a long way to just helping us understand on the site plan uh, the relationships. So the site plan, the, we have a full survey right now. It has all the setbacks on every side of the building and it has all the grades as well. The usable open space that we calculated is all behind the house and that is all very level. The drop is on the side of the house and then it's down and the backyard is not dead flat, but pretty close to level. I think the information that you need on the survey, I'd be happy to provide a full size copy if you need that. Um, maybe, you know, it may just be um, just so a little hard to read, but maybe we could just, uh, you know, identify that um, for next time. So it's very clear for the, maybe just a line or something on the, on the plan so that we can all see it for the next year. Yeah. I wonder if you can head if it's possible for you could just to just take a the plot plan when you in the place where you're making the calculations and just color in the parts of that that you're actually including because I think what you're suggesting is that forgetting the contours and anything like that you have what you're what you're taking into consideration already is not the steeply sloped spaces so we don't have to worry about that. But assuming that that's true, the, the best way to show that would be just to sort of shade in the part that's sloped and say this isn't what we're considering, and and that the rest of it still adds up to the the three thousand square feet or whatever whatever it was in the calculation. Yes, that I can. Be, I I actually did that, but I think it came through to you in kind of black and white. So I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. So. It, Seeing no no further discussion, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to, if it's the sense of the board to do this, to uh, con continue this case uh, until the date certain of March 28th at 7 o'clock, uh, or excuse me, at 7.30 or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard. So moved. So moved by Mr. DuPont. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Riccadelli. Um, we'll go through the roll. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye and the matter is continued. Thank you very much, everyone, for your participation. It's been a enlightening and I hope a useful discussion, certainly for the board and I hope for all of you as well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank everyone. you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next, uh, as soon as my mouse comes off strike and we'll begin to move so I can look at the agenda. Uh, then, so the next case in the order of things is, uh, uh, is uh, 75 Dothan. Uh, I would like to, let's see, um, the, the applicant is here. I, we, we talked to them earlier on quite a lot, long time ago. We're still here. <laughs> um, would you mind terribly much? I'd like to be able, I'm not sure, do you have, are you going to be presenting yourself? Do you have a professional here to pre present for you? No, it's just, just us. us. If, if you would be, I would, if you would be so kind, uh, the next case up, uh, the last one is Hobbs Court, and that's being uh, presented by uh, uh, by uh, Mr. Anessi. And uh, it would be it might be helpful at least to the applicants there if they don't have to pay Mr. for Ms. and Mr. Anessi's time for one more case. Um, so, with your consent, I'd like to take him first and and leave you to to back clean up. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I'm, I will we get a chance tonight or Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I yeah. just, I'm That's just trying to, to do it since as a former lawyer I'm a, I'm a, I'm very attuned to efforts to diminish legal fees and uh usually I oppose those things but but this time is different now. So, but yes, you you'll you'll be given a chance, and I'm hoping this later this case will not be uh, will not last quite as long as we we've had before. Mr. Anessi, uh, 
the, the uh, case that, here, that we'll call uh, docket uh, 3734, 12, 20 Hobbs Court. Yes. And I, uh, you want. Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Hanlon? Yes. Hi, okay. it's, uh, it's uh, Christian Klein. Back. I just want to let you know I'm Mr. here. Mr. Klein is jumping in. I have to defer to him. I just want to let you know I'm here. Okay, so Mr. Klein is, is here as, as well. Christian, if you want to step back into the chair, you're welcome to do that. You're, you're doing so well. I'm, I'm more than <laughs> happy to let you proceed. <laughs> All right, then, Mr. Inessi, uh, why don't you explain what it is that your client would like to do? Yes, uh, I am here representing Mike Hines, who, and Mike is the prospective purchaser of the real estate located at 20 Hobbs Court in Arlington. Uh, 20 Hobbs Court is real estate located in an I zone. Now, uh, uh, Ms. Hines had operated uh, an auto body shop at 34 Dudley Street uh, for some years, going back, I believe, to uh, 2014. Uh, and uh, that was the auto body shop that, been op that had been operated for many years by Ed Whalen. And uh, when Ed Whalen uh, passed away, uh, the property got sold, but the body shop uh, use continued. So what subsequently happened was uh, Mr. Hines uh, sold his 34 Dudley Street property, again, in an I zone, to uh, 34 Dudley Street LLC, not to be redundant, uh, which was a storage, uh, which is a storage facility. And I represented that LLC before the ARB, and they got permission to construct uh, 850 storage units at 34 Dudley Street, LLC. So now uh, Mr. Hines needs a location and he loves being in Arlington. He's been in the business since 1959, by the way. Uh, and he has uh, a son and I believe a grandson as well who are in the business. Uh, the, the son is third generation at this point. And what he would like to do is open up an operation at 20 Hobbs Court and have the son basically uh, run that operation. Now, he's got other operations as well in some other cities and towns, and a couple of those are minority operated uh, by women. Uh, they own at least 25% of the interest in the LLCs, uh, and they've been operating uh, very nicely for many years. Now, what has the property at 20 Hobbs Court been used for uh, for the last number of years? It's been used for a landscape business. And uh, if anybody had, had occasion to ever drive down Hobbs Court and take a look at the property, they would have seen barbed wire above the fence. They would have seen windows with, that were eliminated uh, and, and filled in with cement and the building would have had the appearance of a fortress. What my client is proposing to do is to change all of that. He wants to put the building back in the uh, condition that it looked like uh, before all of this ever happened. And he's gonna talk to you about that uh, momentarily. The, uh, the hours of operation for the uh, new uh, body shop uh, a, a business would be eight in the morning until six at night. You'd have 12 employees. And if you viewed the dimensional form, uh, the dimensional form uh, shows he has ample parking, uh, ample parking on site. Uh, he's going to do some landscaping out front on the site as well. And uh, he's going to talk to you uh, momentarily uh, about what happens with respect to the uh, the spray painting operation, which is going to be located in the back of the building. Uh, that spray paint uh, 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 operation is going to be uh, self-contained. Uh, there's not going to be excessive noise. Uh, there's not going to be uh, any undue uh, aroma in the neighborhood. And by the way, I point out to you 
that if you go to the bylaw, the definition for an I zone uh, suits my client's property uh, immaculately. And that is the industrial district in the Millbrook Valley allows uses requiring the manufacturing, assembly, processing, or handling of materials, which because of their traffic, noise, appearance, odor, or hazardous, uh, would be disruptive to residential and other business uses. Now, uh, my suggestion to you is we don't fit any of those categories, but if we did, then we would be okay because that's what the master plan and that's what the bylaw contemplates for an I zone. That's what an I zone is all about. So uh, again, with respect to uh, the what's going to happening uh, be happening internally in the building, I'm going to let Mike talk to that right now. Mike, are you there? I am. Good. Why don't you jump in, Mike? All right. Thanks for the time tonight. Um, give you a little background on myself, which Bob just did, is that I've been in the auto body business my whole life, and it's actually my father started it in 60, in 1959. And we have have several locations and pride ourselves in being owner operated. And when I say that, when I say my son um, has been running Dudley Street since for the last five years, we'd say, and he's become very, he enjoys working in Arlington. He enjoys the people. And the fact that we, felt that there's a chance that we might not have got another location in Arlington was really, it's been a, it's a tough road. And we came across Hobbs court and feel that it's a perfect fit and probably about the only fit because you, it's a 6,600 square foot building with plenty of parking. And that's very odd uh, these days when you're looking for uh, locations. So as I said, when we're owner, op owner operated and it's we're a family business and you know, and we're a good neighbor. So when I go in there, I, I look at it, my job is how am I gonna make this building look like, like a good neighbor would leave it or like I wanna call a village look. And that is to put new windows in, doors that are, you know, are, are nice to look at. And landscaping, uh, the, the big thing over there is um, the rusty chain link, the barbed wire, you don't need barbed wire anymore these days. You know, you take it all, taking it down, put in black vinyl, just give making the curb appeal that which would be neighborhood friendly. Um, we are a, a company that, that we, we hire, we train people, we hire people, we train them, we promote them. And as they go along, they can become partners. And that's happened in three of my shops um, prior to this. We have one in Belmont, which um, I actually hadn't mentioned to Bob. We had won an award from the Belmont trade. And it was because we took an old ugly body shop and we turned it into something that was a nice shop to look at. And that was on Fletch, Fleet, Fletch Street in, in Belmont, right off of Trapello across from the CVS. So there's, we don't have to change the footprint of the building. All we are going to do is we're gonna put in new windows in the front, which were there before. Um, we'll put in an office on the left side with glass windows and the inside stays the same. The only real piece of equipment we put in would be a spray booth, which is going to be factory installed by a factory approved um, dealer. It's auto equipped. They've been in the business for 50 years and um, have done every one of my shops and um, I've never had an issue. Um, and the, it's the, they have all their own filtrations systems and, um, and I think that's probably as far as the other item that we were going to be doing is we were going to be putting a, adding two doors on the parking lot side of the building. And the reason for that is so we'd be able to operate within our own footprint. So meaning pull, not having to pull out onto the street to pull into the building, that we'd be able to get in and out with ease and not be a burden to anybody driving by. Um, the other items we had is the signage. We keep it simple and conservative. Um, usually just 
you know, white stainless, I mean, uh, silver stainless steel letters, nothing fancy, no neon or any of that landscape, you know, as, as appropriate. And, um, you know, just, just make it a, a good looking building, run our, our business, a nice, clean neighborhood friendly business. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hart. I, I think we can show the signage, uh, if we can, uh, Mr. Inessi, one of the things that I think that we need to just to pause here about is that, as you know, the signage in since for the last several years has been exclusively under the jurisdiction of the ARB. And I think that we're not in a position uh, and don't have the jurisdiction to approve the sign plan that that has to be done by the other body. All right, that's fine. We'll take it to planning and uh, have them take a look at it. Uh, not the ARB necessarily, Mr. Hanlon. Yes, true. we don't think that we uh, need ARB approval, but we do need planning board uh, approval, we believe. Uh, so we'll do that for sure. Uh, the uh, couple of other things that, uh, 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 as Mike mentioned, the only reason we're here is it's change of use, okay? Uh, we don't need any zoning relief. Uh, we're not changing the footprint of the building in any way. Now, I spoke personally uh, with David Morgan of the Conservation Commission because we are in close proximity to the brook. And I asked uh, Mr. Morgan, do we have any issue with the Conservation Commission? And he responded, you do not, Bob. Uh, I had uh, Mike talk with Wayne Chenard, the town engineer, uh, with respect to any potential engineering issue. And Wayne indicated that so long as we're not changing anything as far as the footprint of the building, we do not have any issue with his department as well. So again, the only matter I believe before the board uh, is the uh, issue with respect to change of use. I would suggest to the members of the board that uh, this zone is an ideal zone for the uh, body shop operation. And I'm also going to suggest to the members of the board that a lot of the clients uh, and customers of the body shop operation come from Arlington, uh, from the town of Arlington, and not necessarily from uh, outlying cities and towns. So I believe that this would be uh, a decided benefit to continue to have uh, this well-known and, and, and well-operated body shop operation to have an alternative location in the town and perhaps to go on with the younger Mr. Hines for as many years as dad and grandpa have gone on as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Exactly. Hines. So, um, are there they were at the, this point? Are there any other, are there any questions uh, or comments from the board, Mr. Chair, Mr. Klein? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I I'm I'm glad to see um, you know this industrial use in the industrial district. I think this is a good location for it. Um, apart from the possible confusion over it being Dudley Street Auto, Auto on Hobbs Court. Um, you know, that's, you're going to have to train your, train your customers on that. Um, I did want to just briefly touch on the, um, the site plan and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, share this. So, um, so this is the plan that was, that's provided in the packet from, this is the architect's plan. Um, and the civil the plan from rover survey um, it's rotated relative but the the site plan from rover doesn't include a lot of the landscape notations that are on the architectural plan um, and a, a, directly across the street there is a uh, an R5 district so residential five district with um, a large development of residences. And so that if this was a new construction, 
uh, there is a buffer requirement that's a 25 foot buffer that would be required between the two. Where this is an existing site, an existing use, you're not changing the building, is really just a request for, for use. Um, the board's not in a position to impose the buffer. But I, I would, what I see in the architectural plans, I'm very uh, gratified to see where it, it looks like there's intent, it's intended to be improvements to the landscaping uh, that is facing the residential district. Um, and I, and you had mentioned during your presentation that you were looking to remove uh, the chain link fence, remove the, the, um, the barbed wire from the top and provide a different kind of uh, fence surrounding the property. Um, I think all those are, are, are great things and they will help to, I was gonna say they would help, they sort of help mitigate the change in use, but you know, there's not really a mitigation necessarily um, required. The prior tenant did a lot more work outside because they operated a, a landscaping yard um, on the side where this will, you know, in this case, most things will be occurring inside. Um, I would be interested in getting a little more specificity on what the what the intentions are for the for the landscaping and the fencing, so that the board has a um, you know has has it in writing exactly what what that plan is. Um, I think that would be helpful uh, helpful to the board. And I also um, appreciate that you had mentioned in your presentation that you are adding a side garage door to allow the movement of vehicles more easily into and out of the building and the parking lot. Um, I know the adjacent tenant closer to the to Mill Brook is another is another large automotive um, use. They park cars all over uh, on Mill Brook uh, Street, and so I just wanted to confirm with you that your intention is that you would be maintaining all the vehicles that you are servicing on your property. Absolutely. My, um, one of the things about it, there is a substantial amount of parking there for an operation our size. Um, so I, I don't see any reason why anybody would be parking out there. And I did notice that myself um, and you know, driving to the property. Mike, with respect to the landscaping, uh, at least depicted on the architectural plan, am I talking out of school by indicating that that is what we're proposing to do? Yeah, um, there's already there's already a substantial amount of they're like um, Abervite, you know, Great American Abervites, yeah. and they're about six feet tall. And I I like I kind of like the look of them because you know it's nice to have a little bit of um you know it's nice to have a body shop if your car's damaged, but sometimes to have it sheltered by a natural you know by a natural type of wall there of um of trees sometimes is also nice for the neighbors, not necessarily for us. And um, I'm very aware of that having done quite, quite a few auto body shops. So a lot, some of them are already there. I think there's like six or seven of them and they're gotta be at least eight feet tall. Okay. Um, so are the, the proposed length, the, the way that the landscaping is drawn on this plan, is, is that how it's existing laid out? I, I'm gonna say three quarters of it is. Okay. And then I had planned on um, because even like there's a gate on that one side of it, and I'm not really sure there's a need for, you know, a, a, a gate to be operated there so much. So I had planned on pretty much kind of self-containing that area. And you had said you were looking to do, um, I think, I think Mr. Nessie had said a, a black vinyl fence. Yeah, um, the, um, we'll change the chain, the chain link from the ugly kind of, um, you know, the rusty to mm -hmm. like the black vinyl which would be chain link. And then what you'd put is you'd put kind of black slats in it. And the black blends into the, you know, to the background as opposed to rust or a different color. And what would be the height of the fence? Um, what's what's currently there now. So, you know, again, it's, it's not for really for security reasons because there really isn't a security issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to probably divide the property. So whatever, is there you you cut you take down the barbecue on the uh, the barbed wire aspect of it cap it off and then just kind of paint all the poles that are there black and then put the new vinyl on it okay 
I mean, there's no, there's no need in having a 20 foot fence or because it's just, it's just not the case these days. And maybe in the seventies and eighties, people were breaking into auto shops, but that really doesn't happen anymore. Okay. Or um, current, currently at the back edge of the parking lot, there is a uh, sort of a rather substantial wall built up out of sort of oversized concrete blocks. Is that intended to remain or is that going to be removed? You know, I, I was asked that and I think it also, it makes a good divider. I mean, it, it obviously takes up a little bit of space, but uh, I was planning on probably leaving it because it's just kind of a nice way to privatize unless there was some negative about it, which I, did, I, did, I didn't see any. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt it was a good somewhat dividing um, line and that's obviously left over from the previous owners. Right. And then the only other question I have is, so on the spray booth itself, are there any ventilation components oh, yeah. that, that come, that's come out through the, through the roof? Yeah, it's all filtered. It, it gets, it, we use water-based paint. So it, that's all regulated by uh, the DEP, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the spray booth is approved by, um, the, you know, all the regulations when we buy it. That's the idea of when that we have it installed. It's by a certified factory which there should be documentation showing you that he's a factory rep for the for the um for the manufacturer and anything that's coming through the roof there's nothing that's unusually tall about any of those components there's a there'd be a vent that would come out but it's the, whatever the um what whatever the the code is mm -hmm. i mean it's not gonna be, no it's not like a chimney or anything you know okay yeah that was more of my concern <laughs> okay Great. That's all I had. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much for the questions. Are there any other questions from the board? All right. Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Um, we I announced the general rules for good conduct earlier on, um, and I don't think, see any need to repeat them now. Is there anybody here who'd like to address this project? Mr. Moore. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, uh, a question for you to the applicant. Um, in, in reviewing the documents, it looks like the, uh, the car lifts, which uh, are there, are going to be movable and not embedded. So I assume they're worm gear, uh, um, floor mounted car lifts? Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, I was wondering, what is the age of the existing buildings? The um, the age of the building, roughly. roughly. Got to be. I'm guessing it's got to be what 19. I would say 1920. I'm I, I'm guessing, but I, I, think, I think it's in the 1920s, sometime. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I the the one thing I note uh, here that. Uh, that, I mean, it's, it, it looks like it's an excellent use and it's perfect for the I zone. And uh, it sounds like the applicant is uh, going to some great lengths to restore um, the aesthetic aspect of things. So that's, that's great to hear. My concern is that this looks based on the older site plan that it abuts or is even over, the building is over a part of Millbrook. It's hard to tell. Um, and with a building of that age, I just want to point out that um, I'm sure the building, uh, it, it, oh, there may be cracks in it and such. And um, I would caution the applicant to be um, very attentive to making sure that any uh, offflow from this property and from the automotive use building is, uh, is definitely carefully watched and not allowed to somehow end up in Millbrook, which has had historical significant pollution problems um, from the I zones, which went up to it during its length of the uh, breadth of the town. Um, and, and I just would, uh, I would suggest that the applicant be very careful in, in making sure that, that nothing ends up in Millbrook, be it uh, in liquid form or, or uh, you know, solid, solid waste form by mistake. Certainly, the captain would never try and do such a thing on purpose. But um, I, I, uh, I would hope that we're careful that way. Now, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for putting that up on the screen. It's just hard to tell for me whether or not the Millbrook is buried and in a pipe at that point, or or uh, it's under on posts. And and so I was concerned about that. We're well aware of that issue, uh, uh, Mr. Moore, and that's the reason we talked to David Morgan about it. Right. David Morgan, of course, of the Conservation Commission. He did not see an issue, and he pretty much. Uh, uh, said the same thing that uh, Wayne Chouinard said, if you're not going to be doing anything to change the footprint, that helps. Uh, but uh, we're going to be aware of the fact that we can't do a thing to uh, uh, bring pollution to the brook. The brook is sacrosanct in this town, and we know that. You know, also, the brook is on that, if you're looking at that picture there on that left back side, and there was no access outside of the building from that side. So, of course, you know, obviously you would respect the, and you'd have to be an idiot not to, but there isn't any real activity that would go on in that area. If you notice when I said about opening it up, and if you look to the right of the building where all the, that's where your cars go in and out, you're not going to have really any type of um, activity on that, on that side of the property from us at least. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And it sounds like you're going to be quite attentive to uh, any conditions that might uh, develop that would be negatively impacting the brook. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this application? I don't see anyone with their hands up. It's going once, going twice. Close the public hearing. Um, I turn to the board. Uh, are there any further comments or questions relating to this application? Um, if the board is inclined to grant the application, uh, we presumably want to do so uh, in accordance with the standard conditions. Uh, which are as follows. Uh, standard condition number one is the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Standard two. The building uh, inspectors, inspector is hereby noticed that he is to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he determines that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action, also in, a connect, in accordance with uh, Section 3.1. And Standard 3, the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit. Uh, are there any members of the boards who believe that uh, additional uh, uh, conditions would be necessary or appropriate? Um, Mr. Mr. Klein? Helen, I was looking to prepare a um, a condition just in regards to the landscaping and the fence because those are not otherwise referenced in the application. So what would you what would you want that to say? Uh, I'm busily sc scribbling. <laughs> Mr. Inessi, while Mr. Klein is scribbling, I wonder if there was, a, it did come up at one point that, that your intention was to uh, keep all the vehicles on site. Uh, I was a little unclear whether that meant just the vehicles that are being worked upon or whether that meant also the vehicles of employees. Could you clarify that? Uh, Mike? Yeah, yeah, that would that would be yes. 
Okay, and I take, uh, let me ask uh, if we imposed a condition that said something to the effect that all vehicles of employees and customers will be parked, stored, and, serves, and serviced um, on the property, that that would be appropriate? Yes. Yes. Okay, Mr. Klein, I, I've given you some time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I have two. Then, and, and were you proposing um, what you had just discussed as a third? I was actually. Okay. Well, uh, so I, what I had to put down was uh, was the applicant is to provide landscaping in accordance with the January 3rd, 2023 proposed site plan by AD Architect. The applicant is to maintain the landscaping and replace any plantings which expire within a period of three years. Um, that's sort of the, seems to be the standard term for landscaping that we have used on prior applications. Um, and there was a, the existing fence is to be replaced with a black vinyl chain link fence, not to exceed eight feet in height um, with black infill slats for privacy. Uh, so does that, Mr. Renessi, does that meet with what we had discussed? Yeah, yes, it does. And Mr. Hanlon, I believe you words was that. Um... Well, I had said is all vehicles of employees and customers will be parked, stored, and serviced on the property. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Are there any other conditions that that you that we should uh, we should uh, consider? If Hanlon, not, I would to... just um... yes. Apologize. Uh, just wanted to re reference the questions that were posed by uh, the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, they had just asked two questions of us. Uh, one was uh, regarding proper handling of noise fumes related industrial loaders to be made specific conditions of any permit approvals. The property abuts residential uses, including the old colony apartments. Um, so I know Mr. Anesti had, and uh, the applicant had indicated that, you know, this system is designed specifically um, with that in mind, but uh, do we feel, does the board feel that we should have a specific uh, condition that just says the, um, the, Uh, fumes and related industrial odors. That's going to be so subjective. Yeah, I suppose it's true. Yeah. We just say applicant to abide mm -hmm. by all applicable regulations concerning emissions. It's EP, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I'd like to just interject. It seems to me, <clears throat> excuse me, that all of this is so highly regulated, either by DEP yeah. or whomever, our point. that, yeah. you know, no, no permit for operation, I would think, would be issued if you didn't, uh, you know, act in accord with those. So I, I have no objection to putting in some general language like that, but I do think that it's going to be addressed in the normal course of business. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in addition to that, if 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 the nature of the thing that we're proposing is that is that the applicant will com will comply with all the other things, we haven't really added anything to the all the other things. Right. So I would would then say the applicant to comply with all applicable regulation for the approved special permit use. Yes. All right. That <laughs> would. Be to be fine. Is there any? Are there any? Are there any other conditions? And then they had the the other question was: Have the applicant designate any spaces to be used for outdoor storage of undamaged operable automobiles? We had discussed that that was all just going to be in the yard. So I believe yeah. that that is addressed. Yeah. At this point, so with the, that, I have nothing further. At this point, the chair will entertain a motion. 
Mr. Chair. Mr. Klein. <laughs> uh, I move that the board approve the special permit use uh, as, let's see, special permit use as proposed for the this property with the three standard conditions and the one, two, three, four additional conditions. Second. All right, seconded by uh, Mr. DuPont. Um, are we, do we all understand what we're voting on? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. thank you so much for that nod of the head. It, it really is gonna help a lot. All right, I'll, uh, we'll call the roll. Uh, uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Uh, Mr. Klein. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye and the motion carries. Um, the order incidentally was the order you all appeared on my screen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very Mr. much. Ness, good night. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Markovitz, for for yielding your pride of place here, and we're now getting a quote to you. All right, um, Mr. Uh, I, if Mr. Klein, I wonder if uh, the chair has been sitting in this chair for a really long time, and mm -hmm. uh, would appreciate it if uh, the regular chair could take over for this last case. Absolutely. Okay, so. We are. This is so now we're going back. This is item number four on our agenda for tonight, which is docket number 3732, 75 Dothan Street. Yes. Um, so I would ask the applicants to introduce themselves. Do you have a, a presentation or would you like me to go ahead and pull up the plans? Um, I've, I've got a small presentation. Um, oh, I think perfect. it should be. Pretty quick, um, but first of all, my name is Adam Markowitz. This is my wife, Jessica. Um, we're over at 75 Dothan Street. We've been here for about 15 years now, um, slowly eking our way to our perfect home. Um, so uh, if I could share my screen. You should have that permission. All right, let me just double check and I do. Uh, can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So basically what we're looking at here is uh, this is the, the plot plan for our, our yard. Uh, I want to point out that we do own both lot 182 and lot 181B. Um, so that actually gives us 67 feet of frontage. Um, and really what we're looking at is this small area right here. We want to add a small 10 by 6 uh, mudroom to the front of the house, um, which will benefit us greatly uh, with people not walking directly into our living room. Um, the, the issue that we're having is that uh, we're currently 28 feet back and adding six feet um, to the front of the house will put us at 22 feet, which is, uh, I believe, three feet from what is allowed right now. Um, if we take a look at this, this is this is what our house looks oh, like right now. Screen sharing has stopped. Oh, did I share just the, I must have shared yeah. just the image. Sorry, let me go back here. Okay. Uh, and can you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the drawing of what our house currently looks like here at 75 Dothan. Um, and this is the side view of the house. Um, what we're proposing is adding this little mud room onto the front, such as this, uh, side view one and side view number two. Um, again, it's, it's 60 square feet that we're looking at. It's six by 10. Or I think it might actually be six and a half is what they marked down. Um, I, that that is all I really have presented at this point in time. I'm ready for questions. <laughs> Very good. Um, so the the reason that you are before us is be, as you had said is because of the uh, front yard the, setback. The front yard setback. So yep. this is um, you know members of the board are, are well aware, um, other members, other people who might be on the call might not be. Um, the board often receives applications uh, from uh, residents seeking to do a an addition on the front of the house that is small in scale, often it's open porches, or as in this case, an enclosed entryway, uh, which the board can approve uh, by special permit. 
Um, and so that is the the reason for the the hearing today. Um, I did note that the there are several other uh, houses on the street that are similar to yours. Yours would be the the first that has this projection on the front. Um, mm -hmm. There is a pretty consistent street line, um, but that this is a, a relatively small um, small piece on the front, and it's only you know a single story in height. Um, the just looking through, did you you didn't provide a floor plan for uh, for this entryway, and I was just because it doesn't have any windows on either side. So I, just, I wasn't really sure uh, what the layout was specifically for this entryway. Yeah, so we are not 100%. We haven't had the architect do that up yet, but basically, so as I said, it's going to be approximately 10 by six. So mm -hmm. six feet coming forward, 10 feet to the wide. Um, Basically, it's a front door on one side. When you walk in, there'll be a, a large closet for our coats and jackets. On the other side, there'll be a spot for cubbies for the kids and my wife and I to hang up our everyday stuff. Okay. And that's pretty much it. And then on the um, site, oops, I'm looking at the site plan here on my screen. Um, yeah, so it is just a, a the ten by six, and then it looks like the steps. Is there a landing in front of the steps? In front of the steps? Uh, sorry, no, not in front of the steps. Um, so the steps come up, and then there's, I know on your elevation on the, your side view, it looks like there's a landing, and then there's you know four steps down. Um but a note on the site plan, it does not include that landing in front of the steps. Yeah, the um, landing is gonna be all open. It's just going to be a, a freestanding structure. It won't be, yeah. yeah. No, I just wanna make sure that we're, yeah. because we don't because we don't have a plan mm -hmm. specifically, I just wanted to make, make note of that. Um, and the site plan indicates that the depth of the, is 6.5 6 feet. I just yes. wanted to make, confirm with you that's correct. Okay. The addition is 6.5 by 10. Mm -hmm. um, are there questions from members of the board? Thanks. Do not see any. Um, with that, I will go ahead and um, open the meeting for public comment. Uh, public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand and is intended to assist the board with reaching its decision. If you would like to speak to this application, please use the raise hand button on the participants tab. I don't think anyone is on the phone. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this application? We do have a couple of neighbors here. Okay. They don't need but to say anything. They don't anything. need to say anything. They don't <laughs> <Lots> want to. <laughs> Silence is good. <laughs> <laughs> if there are any neighbors who, who would like to, uh, you know, we do accept people speaking in favor of applications. I know that has not been <laughs> the case this evening, but we, we openly encourage that as well. I've just unmuted myself. I couldn't figure out how to raise my hand, but this ah. is Meg. This is Meg Samini. I live at 71 Dothan Street. We're neighbors with Jess and Adam. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Um, and I'm here, but I um, just wanted to say we support their plans. They've been really communicative about it. Um, and we think it would make their house look lovely and we have no objections. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this application? Yeah, I'm Fernanda. I'm their next door neighbor too, uh, to the Good other evening. side. If you could just give me the, the street address as well. Mine is 79. Dalton. 79, thank you so much. Yeah, and just like Meg say, all good for us. We think we'll be really good for their house. And yeah, no objection at all. 
Wonderful. Thanks, Fernando. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this application? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment for this uh, for this particular hearing. So what we have, it's a, an application for a six and a half by 10 foot, so 65 foot addition on the front of the existing house. Um, this will reduce the front yard setback to 22 feet, um, which the board can approve with uh, the granting of a special permit. Um, just wanted to quickly grab that section of the bylaw. I believe it's 539. Um, yeah, so the porches and enclosed entrances uh, larger than allowed above may extend into the minimum yard regulations otherwise provided for the district by special permit. So that is what we are doing. Um, there was a, this was reviewed by the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, and they had maintained that the proposal was consistent with the special permit criteria. Um, and specifically, they noted um, that the criteria one, the requested use is a, per is a permitted use in the R1 zoning district. Uh, proposal would improve the convenience and safety of the owner's entrance to their home, would not increase traffic congestion or impair any public safety, would not be an undue burden on any municipal systems, it would not result in the need for any special regulation. Um, it would not cause a detrimental excess of any particular use. And they said that the, consistent with the residential design guidelines, the proposed design will introduce human scale architectural variation to the overall streetscape and add visual interest. The applicants may want to consider centering the door panel and adding side windows to the addition and extending the uncovered landing the full width of the addition. Applicants may also be able to improve upon the consistency of proposed detailing, including eve returns and railing material with the style of the existing house and streetscape. Overall, this proposal would not detrimentally impact the neighborhood character of the district or adjoining districts, nor would it be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the neighbors of the property. Um, I just wanted to- The architect told us that we couldn't center the do two side um, windows. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We agree but I with like, them. I like I like expanding the 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 uh, the floor the um, the landing yeah, I like to the full idea. idea. Yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> Let's see. I just go back and pull up the pull up the front elevation here. Um, so yeah. So I think what they were just sort of getting at is that the um, you, know, you sort of have this width. This this front mm -hmm. elevation is rather plain to some mm -hmm. extent. Um, so I think that they were just sort of encouraging. You know, sort of possibly thinking a little bit more about the detailing um, yeah. that would be expressed here. Uh, obviously it, it is, you know, very much in keeping with the, with what you have otherwise on the house. So. Yeah. It's, it's kind of boring looking at it from the front, which is one of the reasons we wanted to do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other comments from the board? Seeing none, if the board was to, uh, act on this application of uh, the board has the three standard um, conditions, which uh, Mr. Hanlon read in into the record on the prior uh, case. Are there any other conditions which the board feels would be necessary um, in regards to this application? I just have a question. Yes, please. So um, I think you noted that there are no floor plans. Mm -hmm. for this. And so I think one of the uh, standard conditions refers to the fact that it will be built mm. in accordance with the floor plans. And and I to me, the solution is just to say that, you know, it can be constructed and not to exceed, you know, so many feet by so many feet, whatever the dimensions are. So that it gives a little latitude if there have to be some minor revisions. So just a thought, maybe it doesn't yeah. need to be said, but it, it did occur to me. Well, it's very well taken, thank you.
And if the architects on the board want to roll their eyes at that suggestion and say, you really don't need to do that, that's fine too. But yeah. It just occurred as to me as I'm listening to it. Yeah, I think one of the reasons we did not get the floor plan was because uh, if we didn't get this special permit, we would probably have to well, uh, we weren't told that we needed to submit as the board plan. Well, so also, but yeah, but we would also have to reconfigure so that we wouldn't be within the the three foot setback, uh, the the setback. Yeah. So yeah, no, anyway. Okay, so I would then, for Mr. Dupont's um, note, I would propose a condition of the proposed addition shall not exceed six point five feet in depth and ten feet in width, and unenclosed landing no greater than four feet in depth shall extend the width of the addition. That sort of cover everything we talked about. Yep. Excellent. Anything further? With that, then I would uh, seek a motion on this application. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that we approve the application subject to the three standard conditions plus the additional condition that the chair just read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Uh, so this is a roll call vote of the board for approval of the special permit application with the four standard conditions plus the one additional condition. Uh, so then... Excuse me, can I just interject? Did you... Um, are you including the one that says that the foundation wall is still the wall do we do that oh. typically? Thank you. I appreciate your bringing that up. Um, we should include that. Um, so this is a quirk of the Arlington zoning bylaws. So um, currently the foundation wall is at the front wall of your house. And by building out the, the small addition, it theoretically moves the front wall of the house forward, which would then allow you to do a much larger addition later by right, oh. um, but the board routinely includes a condition that um, the construction of these types of structures does not move the foundation wall of the house. Um, okay, got it. And it's just all it means is that if you were to do something larger in the future, you would still have to come back to the board. That's yeah. the sole intent of it. Not in the plans. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. This is the last one. So. <laughs> Okay, so the addition shall not affect the position of the foundation wall. So then, um, Mr. Hanlon, as a friendly amendment, it would be three plus two conditions. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Perfect. Um, then with that, we'll do a vote of the board. Um, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, aye. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. And Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are approved. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And we really appreciate your, your patience. It's a, oh, thank a you. Long night for you. Good luck. <laughs> and you. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very Do we welcome. um you. will you send us all of the uh the paperwork and the amendments now? Is that how it works or do we So um what we'll do is we will prepare a full written um decision that we will need to vote on at a subsequent hearing um which uh will like we'll like we have a we have a hearing on March 9th on a 40B application so we could do that as an administrative item at that meeting and okay. then at that point there's a 20 day appeal period um, if anybody wants to appeal it and then you are free and clear. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. So if you just contact inspectional services, they can walk you through all that. All right. Well, thanks again and have a great night, everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Right. Wow. Bye -bye. Finally. Um, so uh, just uh, cover a few items here. Um, so we had our hybrid meeting dry run, um, which I, I think we all we thought was pretty good. Um, we all sort of, I think, also agreed that we hope we don't have to use it. So 
we'll sort of see what what goes forward. I have not heard anything yet from the state delegation as to whether or not they're going to be voting in time to allow our meetings to continue remotely, but we will keep everyone informed as that moves forward. So hopefully we'll be hearing something at some point. Um, did also want to let the board know that uh, the select board has interviewed a candidate for the open associate position on our board. Um, and that gentleman will be on the uh, docket with the select board for approval um, at the start of March. So um, in short order, we will be back to a full complement of, of members, which would be great. Um, so as I said, our next meeting, uh, Thursday, March 9th, is the continued hearing for 1021-1025 Mass Ave. Um, we have us, our typical next regular meeting would be March 14th, but my understanding is that we do not have any business scheduled for the 14th, which I, I will confirm that, but I believe that is the case. Um, so then that would mean that our subsequent meeting is March 23rd, which would be the comprehensive permit again, should that meeting be required, and then March 28th, where we have two continued hearings um, so far on that date is already. Um, so that's Christian, that is, you're correct about the 14th. We don't have anything ready for that, but for, um, we have a bunch on the 28th. Oh, perfect. Um, and so we'll, uh, so Pat, are you able to take on a, a writing the decision for this case? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, do so you we have two, one hubs, two 20 hubs and, and okay. 75 dolphin. And you're okay taking on both of those? Or do you want to sh share the well? How far away is nine days? I'd like to share the well. There's a okay. lot of things coming up in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I could take a, do you want me to take a stab at the Hobbs? Sure, I'll do Dawson. Okay. It works. Um, right. Anything else from, from the board? Nope. Not, I think we are at an end. So I'd like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I would especially like to thank uh, Colleen Rawson and um, Marissa Lau for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. I would especially like to thank uh, Pat Hanlon for taking over. Uh, for the start of the meeting. Uh, I myself was, this is the first meeting I have not been at a portion of in over two years. So it was a little strange for me to sort of log on <laughs> in the middle, but uh, <laughs> appreciate, I appreciate Pat stepping in for me. It was uh, uh, in another role, I am a scout master, one of the local scout troops and one of the scouts who I've known since he was eight or seven. Um, has, had his Eagle Scout Board review tonight. So I wanted to not miss that on his behalf. Wow. So appreciate people letting me do that. Um, so uh, please note the purpose the purpose of the board's recording this meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of our proceedings. Since our understanding, the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. And if anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington dot ma dot us that email address is also listed on the zoning board of appeals website and to conclude tonight's meeting i would ask for a motion to adjourn mr chairman so moved second and thank mr dupont so a vote of the board to adjourn mr dupont aye mr hanlon aye Ms. hoffman aye and mr riccadelli aye and the chair votes aye as well. We are adjourned. Thank you all very, very much. Good night, everyone. Good night, Mr. Everybody. Chairman. Thank you. Good night. Mr. Chairman. Good night. Yes, sir.